Okay, this is the fun part, ready? I can't wait. It's reset day in the Fink Morris household. This day comes about once a week. Usually it's on Sunday, it is a Tuesday today, but unfortunately, or fortunately, this weekend I was playing in the snow the entire time. So we didn't have time for a reset, so here we are in the middle of the week. Michael just has kind of a standard work day today, so I'm gonna take you along on what we would normally do together on a reset day. I think it's so vital to have these days at least once a week just so that you can kind of get your brain space in order and get your physical space in order. So I could just like sit here. I was gonna sit down and record a whole intro, but I figure I'll just take you on the day, show you what I do and let you see it live. Unfortunately, I just, had a bit of a debacle. So I just filmed a little bit of this video's intro and then I played it back on my camera and discovered that the audio sounded like this. So I kind of looked into the back end of my microphone and it turns out this is a microphone that needs to be charged. You learn something new every day about your audio equipment because I didn't think it needed to be charged. I thought it just plugged into my camera and it was running on my camera's battery. Turns out it needs to be charged. So I'm currently wearing a little lavalier microphone. Hello, hello. So I hope you can hear me well. And also this is something funny. I just kind of want to show you this. I'm in a jumpsuit right now. In a standard situation where someone's wearing a lavalier a Lear microphone like this. Usually the wire is snaked down and they wrap the wire around the little body of the microphone and you would like tuck it into your pocket or hook it onto the back of your pants. But because I'm wearing a jumpsuit right now, full body jumpsuit, there was nowhere to put the lavalier body except to drop the wire all the way down. It goes here, it goes all the way down my leg and I hooked it onto my sock. So this is my DIY crafty microphone audio lens situation today. I already filmed a bit of this video and it was in my office and I was showing you how I water my plants and how I decluttered my desk, which is kind of like the first thing I do because my workspace is a sacred space and I don't wanna usually dive into a week of work without first organizing, cleaning up, making sure that notebooks aren't just like scattered to the wind and I haven't accumulated cups and bottles throughout the week, which I usually do. So I already filmed that portion. I could just like fake it and refilm it for you here, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I will show you some clips from the thing I just filmed, which had no audio on it. And I will let you see kind of how I went about cleaning the space. First thing I showed you this which is this little like watering cactus cup that we got for our wedding. This is one of my favorite cups. I was first showing you how when I first put New York City tap water in it, it always looks super cloudy, but if you let it sit, it always goes back to its normal state. Then I just used this to water the four plants on my office ledge. Once these plants were watered, I turned the camera around and I was showing you how I cleaned off my desk. The other thing I showed you when I had no audio, so I just wanna show you now, is this, hold on. I'm gonna get you set up exactly where you were. How's that? This is the other thing that I showed you before. This is called a sad lamp. S-A-D stands for seasonal affective disorder. This is one of those lamps that is supposed to kind of provide light that mimics the sun. It's really good for people who are in places where there are long dark winters and they don't get outside a lot. At least that's what I've heard. So I wanna show you how it works. You just sort of unro unroll it here, plug it in, and then Turn it on. It's like a white blue light and it does give off blue light, which is the light that the sun gives off too. I can't say for certain that I have noticed a major difference in how I feel when I'm using this, but I sort of see it in a similar way to how I see, say, having a green smoothie. I'm not the kind of person that drinks a green smoothie and then feels revitalized from the inside out or feels totally different. I'm not necessarily using this lamp because I notice a major difference, but I know a lot of people do notice that difference. So it's worth trying out if you have seasonal depression or if you just like don't ever see the sun. So I watered the plants and I just tidied up my office. I'm gonna tidy up this 
this little couch here, and then we will go water the plants in the living space. So one thing you might notice about my living space is that I have all of these lights assembled at all times, and that is a personal decision that I've made. Over the years, Like I've decided that if I'm a content creator and if I am going to be making regular YouTube videos and regular content for my various platforms, I cannot be expected to assemble my lights every day. The only way I'm ever gonna use them is if they're up and assembled when I need them. So I keep them up. I'm gonna take my air plant. This is something that needs to soak for 20 minutes, I think every two weeks. So let's take this to the kitchen. So Michael's just doing a typical work day right now. So we're gonna send him into my office so that I can use this space and do the deeds, right? Thanks for kicking me out, guys. Appreciate it. Sorry. We love you. It happens. It does. That's what happens when you have a YouTubing wife. The entryway in our apartment is one of the brightest spaces. We get a lot of natural light here. So this is where we keep a lot of our plants, including that pepperoni plant. What's it called? The Pilea peperomium. Our money tree has lost a lot of cash. If anyone saw this, they might think our financial situation is dire. It's growing back though. This is just kind of where we have these shelves, which I love so much. And I always have to just kind of remember each and every plant here and give it some love because sometimes it's easy to forget them. And then if they don't ever get water, they're not happy. So that's the plants in this corner. And now this is our special plant wall. You must know by now from my videos, up top we have these water propagation planters that I've built and I made a whole video showing how we put that together. And down towards the bottom is our Rise Garden, which is this like indoor gardening system. And we currently have two eggplant plants, two cucumbers and two pea shoots. And the pea pl pod plants are actually growing peas right now. So I wanna show you. Cucumber, pea pod, another pea pod, another cucumber and eggplant, eggplant. Okay, here's how I take care of the rise garden. So about once a week I open this and it's telling me to like take some handheld readings. So at this point I will take this thing and I will take the cap off and turn it on and pop it right into the garden. It's gonna start giving me numbers, including the EC, which I don't know what that means, but I'll pop it up here, and the pH, and then also the temperature in degrees Celsius. So here's my EC, here's my temperature, and then I tap it to get the pH, and it usually just will keep adjusting for a little while. The truth is this is actually filled up exactly to where it needs to be right now, so I don't need to add any water. Okay. So I'm just going to enter the pH here and then I press continue and it will tell me to top off the garden, which my garden is topped off. Okay, it didn't need me to add any nutrients. So it's just telling me that my plants are happy for a week, so I don't have to do anything right now. But normally it would be like, you know, add 50 milliliters of sprout and then I would put sprout in or whatever. So that's that garden. Now if we go up here, Uh, a little spillage, not a problem. You can kind of tell once you add more water, there are always some more like bubbles inside of it. And I think bubbles are a good sign that they're getting some new oxygen to the roots. I think, I mean, I'm not a botanist, but that's just what I think. So that is how I would go about doing this. And I love doing it on my reset day. It's kind of a ritual. I would normally be listening to a podcast or some of my favorite songs and just like cleaning the plants. It's a great time. Michael and I do try to keep the kitchen relatively clean. We do the dishes every single day, not like after every dish. We do let things kind of pile up as we're going through the work day. And then at night, we always wash the dishes. Of course, there are some times when things just sit in the sink overnight or for the whole day, but I try not to let it sit for too long because it will start mm -hmm. to smell. So I just have to kind of go through and do my standard kitchen cleanup right now. And then also this little arrow garden is blinking red and it says add water. So 
When I approach a kitchen like this, my game plan is let's first tackle the dishes. We'll put all the clean dishes onto this rag here. Once they're on the rag, I'll be able to dry them off and put them all in their respective spot. And then the counters will be clean and I can sort of wipe down the counters. And I don't know, we can like talk about whatever you want to talk about. Do you have any suggestions? I'm gonna put my gloves on because I always do that for the dishes. So I've been fully gluten free for about a month and a half, and it is so, so crazy how much my digestion has improved. I always knew, I guess, that I was having stomach troubles, but like I didn't realize how bad it was until I cut out the gluten, and then all of a sudden I was having like normal bathroom patterns. Like I didn't realize how abnormal my bathroom patterns were. And I'm like really, really grateful that I got diagnosed with celiac and that I cut out the gluten. I'm just feeling physically so much better. And also another health update is that my period came back, which is great. I used to hate doing the dishes. Like it used to be a miserable experience for me. And then I discovered podcasts. All right, the beeswax wrap. I always wash this with cold water because if you put hot water on it, it gets like melted almost. <laughs> starts to feel like it's melting. So I usually do cold water and then I'm gonna lay it out and just like wash it with the Castile soap too. I hope this is like ASMR. I'll just set this out to dry. Okay, and then one final tip I need to show you is the way I wash my Vitamix blender is a game changer. So I take the blender, I plug it in, I fill it with warm water and a couple pumps of soap. Then I put the top on and this piece, can't forget this. And then there's actually a section on the Vitamix that is a clean button. You know, there's like smoothie. I use the frozen snowflake for ice cream. Like that's for hot soup. Ignore the chocolate on it from last night. But this one down here is actually the clean button. There's like suds. So you put it on the clean button, set you back up over here and then Wait for it. You could let that go until it stops by itself, but it's really loud and it takes like a minute, so I just cut it off halfway because that is clean enough. Then I pour it out and I just rinse it with hot water again. And now the blender is clean. And honestly, that is so much easier than doing what I used to do, which is putting my cleaner into the blender and actually trying to like clean the blades, which was not only not effective, but was probably a little dangerous. So I think that's the best way to clean your blender. And now that we have done that, we are going to dry everything. A lot of food falls into the stove, so it's a good idea to clean this about once a week or whenever you remember. Oh God, all these things are falling off. It is a life-changing feeling when your stove is clean. You should try it sometime. I love cleaning behind my sink. I don't know why, for some reason it gets so dirty back there. And then we are clean. You just lay that out to dry. And the last thing I have to do in the kitchen is give this thing water. There are a few ways of giving this water. The fastest and easiest way is to move it forward like this, take the top off, turn the cold water on, and just literally pull the sink arm out to the spot where you water it and let it fill up like that. Very easy and effective. Go, go, go. And as soon as I'm done with this, we are done with the kitchen. So. <gasps> I started making my bed this morning and then I realized that it was a day when I was shooting a video where I probably should make the bed in the video to show you guys how I make the bed. So I sort of stopped halfway through and like threw the pillows in a weird spot, but the bed is half made right now. So I'm not gonna like unmake it and remake it. We don't have to make this into a whole like fake thing, but just know that I always make the bed in the morning 
I fluff my blankets. This isn't really something I would do on a reset day. I would say like more of a typical reset day would be taking all the pillowcases off and stripping the sheets and doing a big load of laundry of all the bedding. But I actually did that over the weekend. So it's not happening right now. But the bed is always a good thing to do to kind of just clean the place up. Yeah, that's my bed. <laughs> Onto my clothes. So a good thing to do, this would not happen in my apartment once a week. This is kind of a big undertaking. This is more of like once a quarter is to go through my clothing and create a donation pile. I love donating clothing because I'm the kind of person who doesn't mm -hmm. buy too many clothes for myself, but I do get a lot of clothes sent to me for brand partnerships, or if I'm on set, a stylist will often purchase a whole lot of clothes for the shoot, and then sometimes you can't return the clothing, so I end up taking it home. And I'm not the best about being careful and like making sure that I wear everything I own. I just like throw on the most comfortable thing or the thing that's like in my line of sight in the moment. So I actually do donations more than four times a year, but I'll just kind of show you how I would go about it. So I'm first gonna look through, see if there's anything up here that could be donated. I think I really like everything up here. I recently got some new white t-shirts because a lot of my t-shirts were getting like yellow stains on the armpits. I know I'm sweaty, but like, yellow sweat. So I'm just looking through if I want to donate any of this, but I think I want to keep all of this stuff. This is my absolute favorite outfit ever. Tell you about it soon. Okay, so I am gonna donate this bralette and this bag and this bag. This doesn't fit me anymore. It's really, really small. And oh, these two things are really small and are not really my style anymore, these jean shorts. I'm gonna donate and this top also. I got this for my bachelorette party. It was supposed to be like a small top for the beach. It just didn't work on me. It looks like a four-year-old's top. Like honestly, maybe I should keep this for the point at which I have a child because <laughs> it's kind of cute for a baby. Should I keep it? But like this is in my 28-year-old person's wardrobe, so no. Donate. I keep jeans in my other closet and it's time for these to be donated. I have a lot of jeans, but these are just not the right fit for me. I'm gonna throw this in the donation bag with the stuff from my other closet that I pulled out. And here's my bag. So this is one of my all time favorite outfits that I would just never donate. It is like sustainably handmade. So speaking of some of my favorite clothes, this is the perfect time for me to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Nate. Thank you so much to Nate for sponsoring this video and I am about to come at you with the best gifting that I've ever done on any of my social media platforms ever. So if you're watching this, just by taking like a tiny piece of action that I'm about to tell you, you will get a free gift. This is not one of those situations where it's like enter to win where one person wins. Every single one of you watching this can get a free gift by doing one little thing. Nate is a new iOS app. They're completely changing the game of online shopping. You can kind of think of it as like a universal shopping cart meets social meets a mood board. You can save items from literally any site. You can create and share lists with your friends or you can follow their lists. And then you can send gifts with just a simple text. And what I mean by that is that you can actually skip the checkout from any site and just buy items in two clicks from Nate. So I partnered with the Nate app to create three really fun lists to help you become the best version of yourselves. My lists are called New York City Essentials, Self Care, and Wardrobe Faves. Each list is full of really fun items. So the New York City Essentials list has my tomato garden from the kitchen. I have a lot of my favorite reusable stasher bags, reusable cups, books, candles, all the good stuff I love using in the city. My self care list has my favorite chocolate. We've got those reusable makeup remover pads, a lot of like calming, chill items to take care of your body and health. And my wardrobe favorites has a lot of my favorite clothing items and accessories that I get asked about most frequently. So I shared these bracelets, this necklace, this clover necklace that I get asked about all the time, the really cute outfit that's in my closet, and so much more. So this is US only right now. Nate is only available in the US. So for any of my US subscribers, all you have to do is download the Nate app and then follow one or all of my lists by March 26th. So check out the link in my description box down below. After you follow my list, just keep an eye out in your email and you will receive your gifts. And that's it. I'm telling you, you're gonna love this app. It's so much fun to play around with. And now let's get back into the reset day.
The next thing I love doing on a reset day is cleaning the bathroom. I kind of want to go through like every so often and make sure that I only have stuff in here that I'm using all the time so that it's not overwhelming. And I want to make sure that there's any medications that are in here are not expired. If they are, I want to dispose of them properly. Just clean up, consolidate, make my life a little easier. I don't take birth control anymore, so to figure out what to do with this. Got a new facial bar that I'm going to put in the shower. Every so often, I wanna put a fresh new head on my electric toothbrush. It's a good thing to do today. Oh, I know what we need to do. Okay, best Amazon find ever was this. It is a makeup brush cleaner kit. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. It comes with all these different like sizes depending on what size your makeup brush is. So if I remember correctly, the one that I am cleaning is about this big. So let me show you how this works. It is so cool. All right, first thing we do is we take this and we fill it with warm water and Castile soap. Warm water and Castile soap. Just a little splash like that. We take out my makeup brush. This is the one that I use most of the time. This is the side that goes on the back of this. So you push this side onto the piece and then you take your brush and put it in this hole. Okay, this is the fun part, ready? I can't wait. Now I'm going to stick the brush in here and it's electric, so I'm just gonna press this button and it is absolutely Amazing. And you see the water is getting all brown. That's like all my bronzer and my blush coming off and my brush is just being cleaned so well right now. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna dump this water and replace it with some fresh clean water. Okay, fresh clean water, just like one more hit. How amazing is this? I saw this on Amazon and I was like, why doesn't everyone have this? I don't know, but I'll link it for you in the description box if you wanna try this, cause it's really useful. So then I dump the water out completely. I take the little black piece off the top, so now it's just the cup, and I'm gonna put it back in and just let it kind of spin dry. And by the end of this, it is completely dry. Like if I pull it out here, it's dry. And that is one of the best inventions of the 21st century. We're in the living room now and the messiness that tends to ensue in here is usually on the couch. So like blankets and pillows just kind of get strewn all over the place and once a week we come in, we tidy it up and it's usually looks really much better afterwards. So the first thing I do is fold the blankets. The blankets are big. This one's very light. It's an Amazon find. I will link it for you down below. A lot of people ask me where we got it. It's about $99 and I think it was one of the best purchases I ever made. So that's that. Then this is super heavy, it's like 30 pounds. Okay, maybe it's not that much, but it's a weighted blanket, so it's very heavy and filled with like these beans and it's really hard to fold. Ugh. So I always have to do this one on the floor or commission Michael to help me. A lot of people ask me where I got this couch and it's from West Elm and it's called the Harmony Sofa. So I can also try to link that for you down below. Or you can just go to West Elm and search Harmony Sofa. I really like this couch. That's it, I hope you liked coming along on a typical reset day in my New York City life. The last thing I'm gonna do here is just put a clear coat on my nails, but I just wanted to say thank you to everyone out there for coming on this journey with me. I have been trying really hard to respond to the YouTube comments because I can feel it in your comments. You know, I can feel your energy and I can feel like how connected you feel to me just by the things you write and say. And I always try to respond to let you know that I'm here and I'm listening and I'm looking and I'm reading because I don't want you to ever feel like it's a one-sided conversation. I don't want you to ever feel like I'm just talking at you and then not listening to your reply. But I also don't want you to feel like you're just talking to no one when you respond because I'm here and I am reading the comments. So I just wanted to give a little extra thank you to all the people out there who really spend time when a new video goes live to 
tuning in, watching it, and then writing a nice and thoughtful comment. It just means so much to me, and I've been having these feelings recently of so much gratitude for the fact that I get to do this as a job. The fact that I get to take you along in my everyday life and show you new things and teach you about things and learn things alongside you. I just have my mind being blown all the time that this is what I'm doing for work. And I don't want you to think that it's lost on me how amazing that is. Like I, I truly feel grateful and it wouldn't happen if it was not for you guys. So to every single person out there watching this, Thank you so much for being kind. I am beyond grateful for your energy and just the positivity that you bring to my channel. I want you to know that I am like here for you. So I'm doing this job partially as a way to document my own life. Like I'm excited to look back on these videos in 20 or 30 years, but I'm also doing this for you now. So I want to make these videos to inspire you to make a positive change or do something to enhance your life today. That's it. Anyway, thank you for coming back to my channel. It is a pleasure as always making videos for you. Thank you for not judging me with this. Like lavalier setup. We will have a better microphone situation next time when my other microphone is charged. But thank you for coming back to my channel. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have new videos coming out every single week. And as always, drop a comment down below. I am looking, I am listening, I am reading, I am here for you. I hope everyone is staying safe. I'm sending you so much love and I'll see you next time.